And now, you will fly to him. And you will battle him. To the death. Black and blue. Fight night. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 master manipulators in movies and TV. I'm trying to figure out how you managed to pull this guy into an attack. He virtually shut down the entire defense network without firing a shot. I'll tell you why. It all started in the hallway. I was looking for a crayon so I could draw on the wall and blame it on you, Tommy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, sir. We won't have any cash until the bank's open in an hour. But, uh, I'm sure they can cash your check at the airport. The airport? Who cashes checks at the airport? Well, the airline, sir. For this list, we're looking at those television and film characters who can play most people like puppets. As some of these tricksters also play the audience, spoilers will be unavoidable. Who's the most entertaining screen manipulator? Let us know in the comments. Number 20. Terrence Fletcher, Whiplash. Plenty of adjectives can be used to describe Terrence Fletcher, and all of them are colorful. As the maestro of the Schaefer Conservatory's jazz band, Terrence motivates his students through verbal, psychological, and even physical abuse. Now, either you are deliberately playing out of tune and sabotaging my band, or you don't know you're out of tune, which I'm afraid is even worse. Terrence expects perfection and tears down his students to get it. Either they surpass expectations or are destroyed in the process. Terrence uses his students' emotions against them as they grow desperate to gain the maestro's approval. You earned a part. Alternates, you want to clean the blood off my drum set? Despite putting Andrew through hell, including a vicious humiliation, the drummer still ends up craving Terrence's favor. Number 19, Lancaster Dodd, the master. Isolation, fear, and hopelessness can lead someone to seek guidance from the strangest of people. You've wandered from the proper path, haven't you? These problems you have? <laughs> I don't have any problems. I don't know what I told you, but if you have work for me to do, I can do it. The leader of The Cause, Lancaster Dodd's charismatic and calm facade hides a manipulative trickster desperate for complete control over his followers. Dodd speaks of past lives, philosophy, and healing with all the passion and confidence of a seasoned salesman. And the leader maintains an echo chamber that reacts aggressively to dissension. Your spirit was free. Moving from body to the next body. Free. Free for a moment. And then it was captured by an invader force bent on turning you to the darkest way. You've been implanted with a push-pull mechanism that keeps you fearful of authority and destructive. Not satisfied with only spreading his word, Dodd convinces those desperate enough to listen that he, and only he, can and wants to help them. I have unlocked and discovered a secret to living in these bodies that we hold. Number 18, Scar, the Lion King. Envy is a powerful motivator. Forever banished to exist in Mufasa's overwhelming shadow, Scar festered in his jealousy and hatred for years. Oh no, Mufasa. Perhaps you shouldn't turn your back on me. Is that a challenge? Temper, temper. I wouldn't dream of challenging you. During that time, the lion built a relationship with the hyenas, using their chaotic nature and marginalized status to his advantage. Like a devil on his shoulder, Scar manipulates Simba's youthful impatience and crafts a scenario that leads to Mufasa's murder, an act the villain gleefully commits himself. Long live the king. After convincing Simba that he is responsible for Mufasa's death and freeing the throne in the process, Scar becomes king. What am I gonna do? Run away, Simba. Run. Run away and never return. Kill him. Even though everything falls apart after that, Scar did initially win. Number 17, Catherine Murtoy, Cruel Intentions. While some manipulators are subtle, others prefer to take a more forceful approach. 
To the outside world, Catherine Mertoy is intelligent, charming, and wholesome, a teenage role model for all students everywhere. Behind the scenes, Catherine plays mind games with her stepbrother that threaten to ruin the lives of others. If I win, then that hot little car of yours is mine. And if I win? I'll give you something you've been obsessing about ever since our parents got married. Turning sex into a weapon, Catherine can wrap men around her finger. And crossing this teen will not lead to anything good. Cecile is planning on uh, going away with court next week. Whether portraying the perfect student or presenting Sebastian with a tempting offer, Catherine is always playing a role, and tragedy is her preferred genre. Don't you get it? You're just a toy, Sebastian. A little toy I like to play with. Number 16, Angelica Pickles, Rugrats. Some people are born manipulators. Angelica exists to make sure that Tommy and his friends never get too comfortable. While older than the other characters, Angelica is still young enough to play the part of an innocent girl, something adults tend to fall for more often than not. My Cynthia doll is lost! Gone forever! Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Do you want me to help you look for her? Maybe you could help me call my daddy. He was thinking of buying me a new one anyways. If there is something Angelica wants, then nothing will stand in her way. In fact, the girl seems to delight in setting up the babies as scapegoats. I'll tell you why. It all started in the hallway. I was looking for a crayon so I could draw on the wall and blame it on you, Tommy. <laughs> While most of the characters' schemes usually backfire, Angelica is such a master manipulator that she will have everyone dancing to her tune again within a week. I want you to run right out to Toy City and buy me, I mean her, that new Cynthia Ultra Mega Play World that she's been wanting for so long, since she's been so good and all. Number 15, The Wizard, The Wizard of Oz. After crash landing in Oz, Dorothy sets out to find the wizard, a sorcerer powerful enough to hopefully send the girl and her little dog back to Kansas. We come to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. In a world with magic and its share of competent witches, the wizard somehow manages to establish himself as a godlike being, a pretty impressive feat for someone who's basically a really ambitious con artist. Oh, you liquidated her, eh? Very resourceful. Yes, sir. So we'd like you to keep your promise to us, if you please, sir. For years, the wizard uses technology and illusions to pull the wool over a populace's eyes, a ruse that might have continued indefinitely had it not been for Toto. Oh, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. The great and fast has spoken. Who are you? Oh, I, I, I am the great and powerful wizard of Oz. Number 14, Azula. Avatar The Last Airbender. The princess of the Fire Nation is terrifying and fully aware of it. Powerful and vicious, Azula is a master when it comes to using fear as a tool for manipulation. Family are the only ones you can really trust. Father regrets your banishment. He wants you home. Did you hear me? You should be happy, excited, grateful. I just gave you great news. As part of a regime that prioritizes strength, Azula does not need to mask her cruelty behind a veil of charisma or kindness. What is the daughter of a nobleman doing here? Certainly our parents didn't send us to the Royal Fire Academy for girls to end up in places like this. The greatest demonstration of this firebender's talent for manipulation happens when Azula turns the Dai Li agents against their leader Long Feng. But that is hardly the only example. But true power? The divine right to rule is something you're born with. The fact is, they don't know which one of us is going to be sitting on that throne and which one is going to be bowing down. But I know, and you know. Be it with her so-called friends or Zuko, Azula treats everyone as tools to be used and discarded. Number 13, John Doe, seven. In the typical thriller, the main hero eventually manages to outmaneuver the villain perhaps even beating them at their own game. That never happens in Seven. John Doe states that he's doing God's work by targeting people who embody the seven deadly sins, and the serial killer is almost always multiple steps ahead of Detectives Mills and Somerset. He 
Even after surrendering to the police, the manipulative murderer somehow remains completely in control of the situation. Well, you know what? I'm going to be standing right next to you. So when this big thing happens, you be sure and let me know, because I wouldn't want to miss it. Oh, don't worry. You won't. Ultimately, Somerset and especially Mills can barely comprehend John Doe's thought process, let alone outsmart him. Put the gun down, David. It seems that envy is my sin. No, what's in the box? Not till you give me the what's gun. What's in the box? Give me the gun. He just told you. Number 12, Catherine Trammell, Basic Instinct. Catherine Trammell is a femme fatale who really loves playing that part. Was there anyone with you last night? No. I wasn't in the mood last night. A gifted writer and an even better seductress, Catherine is so apt at pulling off perfect crimes, even the audience is left unsure of which murder she's actually guilty of. Basic Instinct focuses heavily on Catherine's alluring nature, but the novelist backs up her sex appeal with high intelligence and plenty of charm. Whether in the middle of a police interrogation or an affair with a detective doing the interrogating, Catherine is nearly always the one guiding the narrative. Number 11, Frank Abagnale, Catch Me If You Can. After running away from home and realizing that a cash flow might be somewhat important, Frank sets out and becomes a doctor, lawyer, pilot, and even a law enforcement agent. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. We won't have any cash until the bank's open in an hour, but uh, I'm sure they can cash your check at the airport. The airport? Who cashes checks at the airport? Well, the airline, sir. While most people would have to dedicate years to just one of those career paths, Frank skips over the hard work and uses his youthful charm and likability to convince everyone that he is the genuine article. You gonna take roll every night? Uh, yes, I will, Dr. Ashland. And if you're gonna be late, I suggest you bring a note. Based on a real person, Frank is such a genius manipulator, the FBI eventually decides to ask the con artist to help solve other fraud cases. You'd be placed in the custody of the FBI where you'd serve out the remainder of your sentence as an employee of the federal government. Under whose custody? Number 10, Bridget O'Shaughnessy, The Maltese Falcon. Noir stories and femme fatales go hand in hand, and Bridget O'Shaughnessy might be the quintessential example. Arriving on the scene with a different name and a purposefully withdrawn nature, Bridget leaves Sam Spade and every other man in San Francisco mesmerized. Won't you sit down, Miss Watley? Thank you. I inquired at the hotel for the name of a reliable private detective. They mentioned yours. Suppose you tell me about it from the very beginning. I'm from New York. Uh-huh. I'm trying to find my sister. By weaving a tale of murder, deceit, and fake sisters, the irresistible Bridget entices Spade into falling in love with her, despite the detective knowing full well that this dame cannot be trusted. Haven't you tried to buy my loyalty with money and nothing else? What else is there I can buy you with? Bridget has mastered the art of playing the helpless victim to trap men in her web of lies. When you first came to my office, why did you want Thursby shadowed? I told you, Sam, I thought he was betraying me and I wanted to find out. That's a lie. You had Thursby hooked and you knew it and you wanted to get rid of him before Jacoby came with the loot so you wouldn't have to split it with him. Isn't that so? What was your scheme? Number 9. Peter Littlefinger Baelish, Game of Thrones. So much of the tragedies that transpire in Game of Thrones can be traced back to Littlefinger, the ambitious master of coin who gets the War of the Five Kings started. I lost this dagger. To whom? Tyrion Lannister, the imp. What he might lack in physical prowess or rank, Peter Baelish makes up for with his sharp tongue and mind. Through the visage of a friendly consultant, Littlefinger manipulates influential political figures in an attempt to seize the Iron Throne for himself. I did warn you not to trust me. Westeros is filled with people vying for power, but Baelish plays the game better than most, especially in the show's first few seasons. Chaos. A gaping pit waiting to swallow us all. Chaos isn't a pit. Chaos is a ladder. Number 8. Amy Elliott Dunn, Gone Girl. As the inspiration for a perfect character from a children's book, Amy lives in the shadow of a persona based on her. Always playing a part, Amy is a psychopath who can twist herself to match someone else's expectations, usually to the detriment of the victim's health. Then he dragged me penniless to the navel of this great country, 
and found himself a newer, younger, bouncier cool girl. You think I'd let him destroy me and end up happier than ever? Although not infallible when out of her comfort zone, Amy knows how to manipulate the media into a frenzy, creating an illusion that completely masks the truth. Answer his letters, keep him calm. Oh my God, oh, I've encouraged him. You can't blame yourself. Amy is a murderer that manages to set herself up as America's sweetheart, and she gets away with everything. And, and, we're gonna be parents. Oh, my goodness. Oh, how exciting, oh. Number seven, The Joker. The Dark Knight. Practically any version of the Joker is a cunning and manipulative genius, but the Dark Knight's clown prince of crime is especially brilliant. I'm betting the Joker told you to kill me as soon as we loaded the cash. No, 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 no. I killed a bus driver. Bus driver? What bus driver? As a nihilist and anarchist, Joker's ultimate goal is to change Gotham by spreading chaos, but the villain's actions are by no means directionless. The Joker uses fear to force people to embrace their inner cruelty, and sets up scenarios that require victims to play active roles in tragedies. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. The Joker tears down Gotham's white knight Harvey Dent and tests Batman's resolve like no other villain could hope to. It's not about what I want. It's about what's fair! You thought we could be decent men in an indecent time. But you were wrong. Number six, Bridget Gregory, The Last Seduction. As comforting as it is to see good overcome evil, once in a while, a triumphant villain can be really satisfying. Bridget Gregory steals a lot of cash, orchestrates a murder or two, and sets up an innocent man to take the fall. Bridget! Through it all, Bridget is a ferocious and destructive force with no redeeming features, beyond the fact that the character is incredibly entertaining. Okay, there, you happy? What the hell are you doing? Everyone who meets Bridget is ultimately turned into a chess piece to be moved as needed. While some might realize they're being manipulated, Bridget still remains in control. Talk fast. She's my wife. Her name is Bridget. You know her as Wendy Croy. She stole a fortune from me after making me steal it. Number five, Eric Cartman, South Park. Cartman has committed all of the crimes. This character might have yet to hit puberty, but underestimating this sadistic child is a recipe for disaster and cooked parents. I was all ready to put on my chili con carnival so that I could tell you personally about your parents' demise. And of course, feed you your chili. Do you like it? Do you like it, Scott? I call it Mr. and Mrs. Tenerman chili. Throughout South Park's history, Cartman has pulled off too many schemes to count. It worked, you guys, it actually worked. What worked? Everybody bought the whole act. They keep giving and giving until we have it all. What? what? You're keeping that money yourself? Of course, you guys. And then we can make $10 million. Some of his fearsome hits include framing his own mother, setting Wendy up as a Smurfs killer, getting a bunch of psychic detectives arrested or shot, and turning babies addicted to crack into a sport. Yes, he is Jewish. Okay, thanks, Mr. Peters. Bad. As hilarious as South Park's vulgar icon is, there's no denying that Cartman is terrifying. Number four, the master, the mistress, Doctor Who. Established as the Doctor's equal, the master's many incarnations are constantly scheming to seize control or decimate planets, if not the entire universe. Of course, he knows he is entering a trap, but how can he resist such a fate? The hope of preventing an assassination. Quick, fool. It will die quickly. Driven by a burning hatred for the Doctor and an ego the size of the sun, the Master backs up his boisterous claims through carefully laid plans that can manipulate entire cultures into doing his biddings. I'm asking you really properly to stop. Just think. Use my name. Master. I'm sorry. Even so, 
some of the Master's less overly sinister incarnations, such as Missy, are genius manipulators capable of outmaneuvering the greatest human minds or Time Lords. You just need one thing. Missy, no. Me. You need me. A Time Lady to show you how it works. And with this, and with me, everything can be yours. The Master has the hunger and patience to pull off plots that are horrifying but also awe-inspiring. Number 3. Kaiser Soze – The Usual Suspects When it comes to improvising, Kaiser Soze is second to none. As the police investigate a situation that left more than 20 bodies, Agent Kuyan interrogates the seemingly hapless Verbal, one of two survivors. And I want to help you, Agent Kuyan. I like cops. I would have liked to have been a fed myself, but my CP always… Verbal, you're not telling us everything. I know you know something." Furble goes into detail about a strange robbery orchestrated by Kaiser Soze, a mythical crime lord who set the whole thing up to kill the one person who could identify him. He tells him he would rather see his family dead than live another day after this. He lets the last Hungarian go. He waits until his wife and kids are in the ground, and then he goes after the rest of the mob. Stitching a story together through a mix of half-truths and improvisational cues, Verbal strings Kuyan and the audience along through a disarming performance that makes everyone but the storyteller seem like a potential candidate to be Kaiser Soze. After that, my guess is you'll never hear from him again. Number 2. Hannibal Lecter – The Hannibal Franchise Whether in the movies or the TV series, Hannibal Lecter uses his background in psychology to satisfy his thirst for human flesh. Even when relegated to a secondary character like in the Red Dragon adaptations and The Silence of the Lambs, Lecter's intelligence is still on full display with the cannibal using his brief interactions with Agent Starling to plant the seeds for their more complicated relationship in Hannibal. Would you ever say to me, stop? If you loved me, you'd stop. Not in a thousand years. Although Book Lecter is more successful in brainwashing Starling than his film counterpart, the doctor nevertheless pushes the agent to her breaking point. Good nutrition's given you some length of bone, but you're not more than one generation from poor white trash, are you, Agent Starling? And that accent you've tried so desperately to shed, pure West Virginia. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Ava, Ex Machina, because this AI can definitely pass the Turing test. Madam Satan, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, because she plays Sabrina like a fiddle. The great work begins. Regina George, Mean Girls, because the Queen Bee worked for her power. This girl is the nastiest skank bitch. I've ever met. Suzanne Stone, To Die For, because murder is just a step on the road to success for this weather girl. So, I would like to find out about your way of life, how you feel about your education, how you feel about things like peer pressure, how you feel about drugs. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Darth Sidious, Emperor Palpatine, The Star Wars Franchise As the big bad behind multiple trilogies, Palpatine has pulled the strings of an entire universe, establishing himself as an emperor along the way. The Republic will be reorganized into the first galactic empire for a safe and secure society. In a process that took years, Palpatine warped Anakin Skywalker's emotions and development turning the Jedi Knight into a Sith Lord, 
and bringing the Jedi Order to its knees. From here, you will witness the final destruction of the Alliance and the end of your insignificant rebellion. Palpatine would do something similar to Ben Solo, as the Sith Lord used Snoke to inspire Han and Leia's son to join the dark side. Weak. Like your parents. My parents were strong. Palpatine pretty much orchestrated the Clone Wars while effortlessly tricking the galaxy into believing he was kind and gentle. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.